And now it's time for Power of Prophecy with your host, former professor at the University of Texas at Austin, career United States Air Force officer, and best-selling author, Tex Mars. Hello, friends. This is Tex Mars. Welcome to another edition of Power of Prophecy. Well, today we're going to talk about two political candidates, two political candidates for president of the United States, Republicans, no less. Senator Rand Paul, Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky, and Senator Ted Cruz of Texas. Now, these senators are being given a lot of plugs by the Jewish media. In fact, read their campaign statements on their own web pages online and you'll see why. Now, Rand Paul is not Ron Paul. Let me say that right away. Ron Paul was the congressman who was pro-American, America first. But his son, Rand Paul, understands what, well, Ron Paul understood too, but he didn't go along with, which is you've got to kiss the back end of the Israelis to win office. You see, the Jewish media and propaganda department in the United States controls the United States. We are owned body and soul. Well, not the soul if you're a Christian, but by body, surely, by the Jews. The Jews run America. They control the United States of America. And friends, let me tell you right now, you may think that Senator Ted Cruz is an independent Republican. You would be wrong. You may think that Senator Rand Paul is an independent like his father, Ron Paul, was, but you would be wrong. In fact, let me tell you something right now today. Whatever Republican you vote for for President of the United States, it will be little different than voting for the Democrat. It doesn't really matter. You know, when I was a young man, I visited a, uh, 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 it was really a th the county fair. And there they had the political candidates, these, oh, I guess you call them cages or whatever they were, booths. And they were giving out all kinds of literature. And I remember George, uh, the, the governor of the state uh, of Alabama, George Wallace, was running for president. Nixon was one of the candidates too. And I think I've forgotten, I think it was who it was running for the Democrat side. I think it was the Senator George McGovern of South Dakota. But I always got a kick out of George Wallace, very colorful, running for president. He was running on the American Independent Party ticket. He said, I'm neither Republican nor Democrat. In fact, they gave out what looked to be like a dime dimes and we're handing them out you know you walk by and they just give you a whole handful of dimes but they weren't real dimes on one side they had the republican image and on the other side the democrat you know they had the donkey and the uh, the elephant but at the top it said not a dime's worth the difference <laughs> now george wallace was smart enough to know that so he created his own party called the american independent party and his vice presidential running mate was General Curtis LeMay, the old Air Force general. Not a dime's worth of difference. Now, friends, if you think there's a dime's worth of difference between the Republicans and Democrats, I mean, not only are you being cheated there, but you're going to go along. <laughs> you're going to be cheated in all kinds of things. For example, Obamacare. If you think Obamacare is one of the worst things that the Obama administration has foisted upon us Americans. You have to understand, the Republicans have been given all the money for Obamacare. Go, what? How did that happen? Well, the Republicans control the U.S. House of Representatives. According to the Constitution, it's the House of Representatives that has the power of the purse. They're the ones that approve the money. If they don't approve the money, it cannot even be considered by the Senate. 
Every money bill, every bit of legislation must begin and be passed first by the House of Representatives, then it goes to the Senate. Now, the Democrats control the Senate. But House Speaker John Boehner, a Republican, and his Republican pals, they control the House. And ever since Obama has got elected, they have voted to spend billions of dollars for Obamacare. How can that how can that be? Well, I was just opening up the newspaper about oh two months ago. This is 2014 now. 2014. And it said there the Republicans and Democrat leaders of the House and the Senate got together in the White House with Barack Obama and they all got together and approved more money. More money to go into the Middle East fighting a war there. Now we're gonna go fight ISIS. But they also approved billions of dollars for Obamacare. Say what? The Republicans approved the money for Obamacare? Oh, yes. <laughs> it's not just a Democrat plot. Obamacare is a Republican plan. No, you can't prove that takes more. Of course I can. They voted for it. Now, you write your congressman, he'll write you back and say, I opposed Obamacare. But check his record in the House. And it's likely that he voted for Obamacare. Now, these nuts, these wackos, these evil politicians will do anything to win re-election. They'll go forth and tell all the people, I oppose Obamacare. But if you check their record, you find out they voted for Obamacare. How can that be? They're Republicans. It's because the people are stupid. The people are ignorant. They don't even know about this. Their own leadership voted for Obamacare. John Boehner, their House Speaker, voted for Obamacare. Well, who put him as a House Speaker? Who made him the House Speaker? Well, all the Republicans got together. They had a caucus. They had a meeting, and they decided that he was going to be the, the, the House Speaker. And John Boehner plays golf. He's a big golfing pal of Barack Obama. What do you think they talk about on the golf course? Oh, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to find out exactly. But I do know they. one thing they talk about is Obamacare. Other than that, it doesn't really interest me at all. Now, the problem is, is that the Jews of America, the Israelis, and every Jew in America, even if he was born here, is an Israeli. They're, they're dual citizen. You remember Rahm Emanuel was chief of staff of the White House. At the same time, he had served in the Israeli Defense Forces and was a citizen of Israel. Now, I know you're going to ask me, how can you be a citizen of two countries at one time? Well, you can if you're a Jew. You can if you're a, you're a Jew. And they, all of the congressmen... Every Jewish congressman in the United States will tell you where they were born. For example, Debbie Wasserman Sh uh, Schmidt, she's the chairperson of the Democrat National Committee. That th They're the ones that give out all the money for the candidates. My sweet Debbie, the congress lady from down in Florida, she'll tell you she's a citizen of the United States. But if you're a Jew, ask her and say, are you a citizen of Israel? Yes, I'm a citizen of Israel. How can that be? It's part of their lying nature. They're all liars. They're not really Americans at all. And they will always vote for Israel against America. They're not America first. They're Israel first. Get that? They're Israel first, Israel second, Israel every way. They're not America first. Maybe we need an America first political party. What do you think, folks? We need a party. But even if it were called America First, probably the Jews would get in and buy it up, and pretty soon it would be a, the Jewish First Party again. You know, I was recently reading an article. Actually, it was a speech. It was a speech by Seymour Hirsch, H-E-R-S-H. -E Seymour Hirsch is a great writer. He's the one that broke the My Lai story about Vietnam. Well, he was in 2004 at the ACLU conference, the ACLU conference. 
And he talked about the truth. Now, when you talk about the truth and you're Jewish, it's, a, it's quite a thing. Now, I loved his keynote speech there at the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union. And you know, <laughs> the first thing he says, we're a country that does not condone torture and abuses. And that's the same thing George Bush and Dick Cheney said. We're a country that does not condone torture and abuses. Now, that after... We, we tortured thousands of prisoners. Did you know that the, the ACLU audience laughed at that? They got the biggest guff all from that. Now think of that. You say we're a nation that does not, does not condone torture and abuse, abuse of, of prisoners. And they laughed at it. They knew he was joking them. But Seymour Hirsch went on to say some other things. He, he went on to say, we don't have trust and integrity in our office anymore. He said, really, we have a bad bargain with our politicians. We can't trust them. They have no integrity. But we seem to live with it, he said, pretty happily. Imagine. Our politicians have no integrity. We cannot trust them. But the American people seem to live with it quote, unquote, pretty happily. We go along, he said. We know we don't get the story from the president, from the National Security Advisor, but we still go along with it. Now, did you get that, folks? Seymour Hirsch, a Jew, is blowing the lid on what um, the American government's all about. He said the American elite the ones who control the presidency, the one, ones in the White House, our national security advisor, the leaders of Congress. He says, quote, they have the right to send our children, men and women now, in the name of democracy to go kill people and to be killed and torture and perhaps be tortured in return, which is always going to be the end result of torture. We need to make these people stand up for, for, he said, for the highest possible standards, but we don't do it. This is not an academic debate, he says. I'm simply telling you the truth. He says, we have a, a bad bargain we've made with our politicians. And we are of the ACLU, we're, we're the elite too. We know what we're doing. We know about this bad bargain with our politicians. We don't, quote, we don't have any expectation that they're going to have the same trust and integrity in conducting their affairs as we do in our own personal life. Friends, on your job, in your church, among your family, do you not have an expectation of high integrity, of trust? Do you have a brother, a sister, a mother, a father you cannot trust? They have no integrity? I feel sorry for you. I do. He said, we don't have any expectation that our leaders are going to be trustworthy. They have the right, again, he says, to send our children men and women now, in the name of democracy, to go kill people and be killed and torture and be tortured and returned. What happened at Abu Ghraib? What happened in Iraq under our president, Condi Rice, the vice president, and now under Barack Obama? And yes, Panetta is the secretary of defense and, 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 and all the people, the, the crumbs he's got around him. What happened, says Hirsch, are war crimes. Guilty knowledge. It's a crime. And then he says this. He says, I'll tell you what an Israeli told me. An Israeli said, America is an evil country. And if we, Israelis, had done in our prisons to the Arabs, what you have done to the Arabs in your prisons, why, well, we couldn't live that way. Well, that's baloney because Israel has done horrible things to the Arabs. Is that true? Have we done terrible things to the Arabs? Have we done terrible things to the Iraqis, to the Syrians, 
to the Palestinians? I can tell you, says Mr. Hirsch, it was much worse, and the government knows it's much worse than they've even told you. There are worse photos, worse videotapes, worse events. He wrote for the New Yorker magazine, the New Yorker, Mr. Hirsch did. He said, we couldn't even print in the New Yorker magazine the truth. We had to censor ourselves. How much can you levy on the American people? They're not able to take it. You know, when I read about Milai, the Milai incident, where Lieutenant William Calley and his platoon of soldiers took all these, what, four or 500 villagers, put them all in a ditch and massacred them all, just mowed them down. That was almost too much for me to take. How about you, friends? We've done worse than that over, over in Iraq. He says, Seymour Hersh says, the Arabs, the Muslims, see us as a sexually perverse society. The sexual stuff we did to them is seen as perversion. And I think we're going to have consequences for a long time to come. He said the Arabs used to respect Americans. Wherever the Americans went in the Arab world, the Arabs had respect for us, but no more. They see us as sexual perverts. Because the U.S. government has sodomized boys and raped young women. And, and listen to what he says here. This is, he says there's a neocon cult. He's a Jew talking to America through the ACLU. You don't get this at the Republican convention. You're not going to go to a meeting of Ted Cruz or Rand Paul. They're not going to tell you this. Here is a Jew, a Jew, a liberal Jew, Seymour Hersh, writer of the New Yorker magazine, speaking at the annual convention of the biggest liberals in America, the American Civil Liberties Union, and listen to what he says. You will not get this, my friends. You're not going to get this anywhere but on Power of Prophecy radio program. You won't hear Ted Cruz tell you about it. You won't hear Rand Paul. You won't hear the House Speaker John Boehner. You won't hear who, who, the, the leader of the Republican Party in the Senate, Mr. McConnell. Okay, here's what happens, says Seymour Hersh. Listen to this. A bunch of guys, eight or nine neoconservatives, that's Jews in America, cultists, not Charles Manson cultists, but cultists, they get in our government. And with all due respect to Michael Moore, his movie's fine, but it's not about oil. It's not even about protecting Israel. It's about a utopia the Jews have. It's about an idea the neocon Jews in America have. I would say that Paul Wolfowitz, he's a Jew in the Defense Department, Paul Wolfowitz, says Hirsch, is the greatest Trotskyite of our time. He believes in permanent revolution and in the Middle East to begin, needless to say. Now get that. The neocons in America had a plan called Project for a New American Century, developed in 1998. And in their plan, they talked about America was going to have to fight these wars in the Middle East. America was going to have to fight wars for Israel in the Middle East. General Wesley Clark went to the Pentagon and visited, and secretly somebody there showed him, said, look this, here's all the countries we're going to be invading in the Middle East. General Wesley Clark was right. Yemen, Libya, Iraq, Syria, Iran, all these countries. Now, Paul Wolfowitz was one of the top neocons. He has said, Hirsch, the greatest Trotskyite of our time. Do you know what being a Trotskyite means? Leon Trotsky is the one who gave us communism in the Soviet Union. 66 million perished, mostly Christians. Because the communists were Jews who believe in permanent revolution. What will permanent revolution get you? It will get you a Jewish utopia in the world. That's their belief. Because they're serpents. And Jesus said, ye are serpents. You're a race of vipers, he told the Jews. 
They, what do the Jewish communists believe? They believe in a permanent revolution in every nation on earth. And these neocons have grabbed hold of America through the great Jewish lobby and all of their money, their billions of dollars. Ted Cruz has fallen for it. He is part of them. They are him. He is, he is part of them. Rand Paul is now a Jewish neocon. You don't believe me? Listen to everything he has to say. He will always vote for Israel. We must protect Israel. We must do whatever the Jews say. Now, Christians are beginning to wake up. Around the United States, Christians are beginning to say, wait, 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 wait. Why should we be for Israel all the time? Why do we have to favor the Jews? Many Christians are even beginning to say, wait, they're not God's chosen. They despise God's son, Jesus Christ. You can't despise the son and, and, and state that you have the father. It's not true. They cannot be God's chosen because they hate the son. Their Talmud says the son is a bastard. He's not a bastard. He's the Messiah of the whole planet earth. He is the head of the universe. Jesus Christ is Lord. They don't understand that Jews are involved in permanent revolution in the United States and in every country on earth. And the neocons, and her says a bunch of guys, eight or nine neocons, cultists he calls them. They're working to set up a utopia in the world. And they're conducting a permanent revolution. And part of that permanent revolution is a war, a series of wars in the Middle East. And they must grab hold of the scalp of the American politicians. It is through the American politicians that they will get the money and the military ability to decimate, to control, to massacre Millions of people in the Middle East, they don't care how many they kill through genocide, and they don't care how many Christians they kill. Now, I want you to go back and you study the statistics. Ask yourself, how many Christians lived in the Middle East in, say, 1920, 1930, 1950, 1970, 1990, and the year 2014? How many Christians live there? How many live there now? you'll find out that, that very few Christians live. I've been told that up to 2 million Christians lived in Iraq during the time of Saddam Hussein. 2 million. I think that's far too many. But I know one thing, probably only about ten or 15,000 are in Iraq now. Of 2 million reputed, only ten or 15,000 are Christians now. What happened to the others? They left. They went away or they were killed. Who killed them? ISIS. Who is ISIS? Did these people just spring up all of a sudden in northern Syria? No. They're paid for by America. That's what happened at Benghazi. Don't you understand what happened at Benghazi? The reason it's been covered up by Obama and Hillary Clinton is because Benghazi, at Benghazi, our ambassador ran, organized the entire arms movement from Libya into Syria. They were funding ISIS through Benghazi. Do you get that, folks? Benghazi was a conduit for armaments. We first went in and brought all our armaments into Libya. We conquered and we killed Muammar Gaddafi. But we weren't finished yet. We then took Libya and we took the, the agents there, the, the so-called ISIS uh, terrorists, the Muslims, the jihadis, and we moved them with all of their arms and all of their weapons into northern Syria and into Jordan. And from there we set up this ISIS. And ISIS then conquered most of Iraq and set up the great Sunni empire there, the ISIS nation. And they then began to attack the, the Kurds and the Shias of Baghdad. You see, everything is just as it was planned. Benghazi 
was planned. Now, I don't know why the ambassador was murdered there. Maybe another faction fought him. I'm not quite sure of what happened there. But I want you to know something. Seymour Hearst saw it coming. He said there are eight or nine neoconservatives. That's all there were. One of them was Richard Perlman, who was called the Prince of Darkness in Washington, D.C. He said this, listen to this now. This is what he told the ACLU in 2004. He said, they've taken the government over. They've taken the government over. That's a small bunch of people. He says, you have a bunch of people who have been for 10 or 12 years, been fantasizing since the 1991 Gulf War. And of course, Israel will be a beneficiary. But the world is in their eyes. This is utopia. And so they got together this small group of cultists, neocons, Jews. And how did they do it? They did do it, he said. They've taken this government over. And what is amazing to me and what really is troubling is how fragile our democracy is. Look what has happened to us. They took over the U.S. government with George W. Bush sitting in the White House. They took it over. There's been a coup d'etat in America. And they used to be called Democrats, but they switched to Republicans so that they could control both parties. And now the neocons control the Democrats and the Republican parties. But the press has not done its job. Seymour Hersh is a member of the press. He's one of America's most respected writers. He says there's a tremendous, this is a quote, a tremendous amount of self-censorship among the press. It's like a disease. The press will not tell you the truth. Ted Cruz will not tell you the truth. Ted Cruz got up before a Christian group just two weeks ago. And he started off, he was going to talk about what's happened in the Middle East. What's happened to the Christians in the Middle East. But he started off by saying Israel is our greatest ally we have. But that that, that, that the audience was Christian and they had just seen the battering, the massacring of the Palestinian and Christian people in Gaza by the Jews who created some pretext that three teenagers had been killed. And so they brought in and they, and they, they murdered thousands of Palestinians and Christians. You have to understand among the Palestinians, there's a number of Christians. Now, I know that the American Christians don't understand that there are also Christians in Palestine. And the Jews have been tormenting, torturing, and killing them ever since 1948. And so today, there are very few Christians left. If you're a Christian, they do not allow you to live and own property in Israel, period. You will not find this out, what I'm telling you, friends, that Ted Cruz is a monster and Rand Paul is a monster. Both of them seem to be good Republicans, conservatives. But both of them are pro-Jewish, pro-Israel all the way. You have to understand Ted Cruz is not his own man. His wife is vice president of Goldman Sachs Bank. Goldman Sachs owned by the Rothschilds, owned by the Jews. His wife is a vice president of Goldman Sachs Bank. He was made a senator. By the Jews. That's, I'm telling you the truth. Ted Cruz is a Jewish Sionim, a Jewish agent of the Mossad, and so is Rand Paul now. Rand Paul could have done it differently, but he would have never got elected. His father never got elected. He knows what happened to his father. The Jews killed the election chances for Ron Paul. So Rand Paul said, I am going to support the Jews. I will win election. And he will because he's a Jewish Sionim. Now, I'm Tex Morris. We're going to be telling you a lot more about Mr. Ted Cruz, a Jewish Sionim, a Jewish spy, and Rand Paul, another Jewish spy. Both Republicans, both politicians, and both are Israeli firsters, and America is way, way behind. Stay with us, won't you? Hello, friends. I'm Tex Mars. I'm author of a book that, well, you must have a copy of this book. I don't know if anyone's ever written a book entitled 
Conspiracy of the Six-Pointed Star is even related to it. Conspiracy of the Six-Pointed Star. The subtitle is Eye-Opening Revelations and Forbidden Knowledge about Israel, the Jews, Zionism, and the Rothschilds. Conspiracy of the Six-Pointed Star. It's a huge book like an encyclopedia. Let me tell you a little bit about this book. For example, on pages 118 and 119 is the true story of General George Patton. Now, I know at Fox News, O'Reilly has written a book. Actually, he's ghostwritten it. His ghostwriter, Martin Duger, wrote it. But O'Reilly took credit for it. It's number one on the New York Times bestseller list. It's called Killing Patton. And he suggests that Patton was murdered by the communist. Now, I want to explain to you, when my book came out, and it's one of the very few books ever written that tells you the truth about George Patton, that George Patton opposed Morgenthau, the Jews' plan for Germany. You see, the Morgenthau plan of the Roosevelt and Truman administration called for the murder of Germany and the murder of the German people. And everything you've known about Germany after World War II is not true. It's, it's, it's a bunch of lies. We planned the massacre and genocide of the German people. It was planned by the Jews of New York City. It was called the Morgenthau Plan. And Morgenthau was the Secretary of the Treasury, and he was carrying it out with other top Jews, Bernard Baruch and others, all bankers. General George Patton, the great general, fought against the Morgenthau plan. And he saw what the Jews were, and he wrote to his wife. He wrote letters. He had a a great love relationship with his wife back here in America. Finally, he decided, I'm going to have to come home now. You see, we had defeated Germany, but we began to torture and torment the German people and to kill so many. He said, I'm going to have to go home now and tell the American people what their government is doing. We're starving the German people to death, and it's a purposeful thing. Millions of Germans have died. He told his wife, I will not be responsible for this, this horrible genocide of the German people. The German government surrendered, but but in reality, the Germans thought that the Americans would take care of them. The Americans were honorable and generous, compassionate. But we began to do the horrible things that the Russians did. We were going to even exceed the Russians, killing many Germans and putting the Germans into prisoner of war camps. And it was horrible what we were doing to the Germans. And George Patton was told by Eisenhower to shut up. Just shut up and do what we tell you. Patton told his wife, I'm not going to go along with this. I'm I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go back to America. I'm going to tell the American press what is happening to Germany. You see, he was the he was a general who basically conquered the Germans. His forces were right there. They were ordered to stop along the Western Armist- Armistice line because Well, he would have gone and taken the whole nation of Germany, but Eisenhower made him stop and allow the Russians to catch up coming from the uh, east. In any case, it's apparent that George Patton was murdered by the Jews. They plotted, and they decided to murder him. But O'Reilly and the Fox Network, no doubt, were contacted by top Jews in America And they were told, listen, we've got to stop these people like Tex Mars. These people that are writing the truth about George Patton. We've got to tell the people that the communists did it. Oh, yeah, the communists did it. Not the Jewish communists, because the communists were Jews. But the communists did it. Now, I realize that O'Reilly's book is number one on the bestsellers list, Killing Patton. But it's all about the communists killing Patton. I want you to read the truth. Read pages 118 and 119 in my book. It's the Jews that kill Patton. He was worried what was going on in Germany. 
He told his wife, I'm going to return and spill the beans. And he died. <sighs> Patriotic hero, General George Patton, murdered. Now, there's so much in this book. Conspiracy of the Six-Pointed Star. I want you to have a copy of this book. It's $25. Please add $5 shipping and handling. A total of $30. I'll tell you, you'll have a lot to read here. Greed, money, murder, blood. All of these things are included in this book. You'll read about Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, John Kerry, Sarah Palin, Glenn Beck, Newt Gingrich, David Rockefeller, Lord Rothschild, John McCain. They're all covered in this book. You'll even see how Jack Ruby was connected with Bill Clinton. Oh, there's a real strange tale there. You'll read about the Babylonian black magic practiced by Kabbalistic rabbis. You'll see the real reason why the U.S. military forces are in the Middle East. You'll discover who really killed John F. Kennedy. It's all in this book. Conspiracy of the Six Point Star digs deep into the abyss, uncovers things that control media dare not even imagine. You'll have the book of books, my friends. Conspiracy of the Six Pointed Star by Tex Mars. $25 at $5 shipping and handling. No wonder Fox News O'Reilly had to come out with a book killing Patton, which covered up the fact that he was opposed to the Zionist regime, that Patton was opposed. It wasn't the communists that killed Patton, it was the Jews. <sighs> But now they have a book that says the communists did it. It goes along with the Jewish plan right now. We're You and I are supposed to hate Vladimir Putin. Oh, he's the tyrant. That's what O'Reilly says about him. He's a tyrant, says Fox Network. Vladimir Putin is going to bring World War III to America. He's going to kill us all. Baloney. Vladimir Putin is a Christian. Vladimir Putin is is the sponsor of the Christian church. Vladimir Putin has put down the gay agenda in Russia. That's why they hate him. He's put down the gays. He says, we're not going to have gay debauchery like they've got in America. That's why the gays of America hate him. That's why Fox Network wants to, to get rid of him. Why do you think O'Reilly has people like Rosie O'Donnell on and compliments her? Rosie O'Donnell, the queer. Why do you think O'Reilly has given $25,000 of his own money, quote unquote, to Reverend Al Sharpton? Did you know that, folks? He gave $25,000 to Al Sharpton. Now he's written a book saying the communist killed Patton. Boy, they try to get their hooks into you first, don't they, the Jews? But I've already written the book. I've already written the book that tells who killed Patton. It's in the book, Conspiracy of the Six Pointed Star. And I want you to have it. A total of $30 that includes shipping and handling. Just call us toll free, 1-800-234-9673. 1-800-234-9673. Or go to our website, powerofprophecy.com. Powerofprophecy.com. Or phone us toll free, 1-800-234-9673. Write to us, Power of Prophecy. 1708 Patterson Road, Austin, Texas, 78733. By the way, our new book, our newest book by Martin Luther, the great Protestant reformer. It's his classic warning about the Jews and their hatred of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's entitled, On the Jews and Their Lies. On the Jews and Their Lies. Here's a book that's been banned by the Jews in the Vatican for almost 500 years. We have brought it out. It's a fantastic book. It's for today. It's for 2014. Read Martin Luther's great book on the Jews and their lies. It's just $20 add $5 shipping and handling. A total of $25. The first time this book has been in print, and we've done it here at Power of Prophecy. Now let's return to our regular program. You know, there's an article out recently. I've got the Breitbart version of it from the Internet. It says, A startling new political science study concludes 
that corporate interest and mega wealthy individuals control U.S. policy to such a degree that the preferences of the average American have only a minuscule, near zero, non-significant impact upon public policy. Now, let's just put it like it is. Folks, you have near zero impact on public policy. Our government is Israel first, and, and America doesn't even come second. We should have an America first party that promotes America. Is America first? But we don't have that. We bring the Ebola virus into America. We, we, we tell all the librarians in the world, you can come to America, it's okay. We don't even give them tests for Ebola. We don't love this country. We send 3,000 American soldiers over to fight Ebola. How can American soldiers fight Ebola? You know that some of those soldiers are going to come back and be put in hospitals. They're going to give their lives fighting Ebola. That's nonsense. That's not the duty of soldiers. We're not fighters. We're not warriors against Ebola. That's crummy. That's, that's, a, that's a hatred of the American military by Barack Obama. And ISIS. Now, you're going to hear Ted Cruz say, oh, we've got to fight ISIS. We've got to go to the Middle East. We've got to get involved in this war. Rand Paul will also tell you we've got to, we've got to fight this ISIS. Who is ISIS? Is it ISIS the name of the goddess? Yes, that is ISIS. Her name was also Ishtar or Ashtar. She's in the Bible. Upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. But the Muslims are not our enemy except as spiritual enemies. I don't care how many armaments have they. And they, don't, they don't have the weapons that America has. We're not concerned about the Muslims coming to America. We're going to be being told, I mean, think about it. We're told constantly the Muslims hate us. The Muslim terrorists want to kill all of us. The Muslims are going to bring nuclear weapons to America. The Muslims are going to carry out another 9-11 attack. Nonsense. Those things are, are done by our own government. That's right. It's an inside job, folks. This is the problem. The Muslims were killing each other 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 300 years ago, 400 years ago, 500 years ago. We cannot bring democracy to the Middle East. We can't even bring democracy to the United States of America, like Seymour Hersh says. Listen to what he says. He says the press right now is like a disease. The press is like a disease. The neocons now run the press. They took away the edge from the press. That's what he says. They have muzzled the bureaucracy. They muzzled the military. They muzzled the Congress. And it's an amazing fact. We're supposed to be a democratic society. And all those areas of our democracy have bowed and scraped to this group of neocons who advocated their policy. Think about that. The press, the bureaucracy the military, the Congress. Even the courts today are controlled by the Jews. And he's talking about a small group of neocon billionaires, millionaires. And all these areas of our once great country have bowed and scraped to this group of neocons. He says, we have a government that basically has been operating on the principle that if you're a genius, you're for us in the Middle East. And if you oppose us in the Middle East, you're a traitor. You're a traitor if you oppose the wars in the Middle East. What's next? He says, worse is to come. Worse is to come because we have no democracy in America anymore. The Jewish neocons control America. And you, my friends, have near zero impact on U.S. policy. Now, they made up all kind of names of people who were to fight in the Middle East. ISIS, ISIL, Free Syria, Al-Nusra, Al-Qaeda, Khorasan. All of these are fake names. Listen, folks, 
You can get a bunch of thuggish monsters, a bunch of thugs, and you can give them any name you want. They're Muslims killing other Muslims. They're genociding other Muslims. Of course they'll kill Christians. They're killing Muslims. A bunch of thugs. That's what we're sponsoring in the Middle East. Even Joe Biden, the vice president, gave a speech recently. And afterwards he had to apologize. Because what he did was he exposed the fact that the Arab countries themselves, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Jordan, even the Israelis are all sponsoring ISIS. He said they're all, they're the ones paying for it. Our vice president said that, and then he had to apologize for what he said. I was reading an article in a major newspaper, and it said he told the truth, but he shouldn't have. The American people are not supposed to know that the Arabs are paying to kill other Arabs. In Saudi Arabia, the sheikhs there are controlled by the Jews, and they're paying for ISIS. They're, they're, they're giving them all the billions they need and all the armaments through the through America. America's giving the armaments, they're giving the millions, billions. Egypt, if Egypt were a true Muslim country, if the Muslim Brotherhood really controlled Egypt, would not Egypt attack in Israel? I mean, think about it. There's 90 million, 90, 90 million people in Egypt. 90 million. How many are in Israel? 7 million. 90 million in one Arab nation versus how many? 7 million. But Egypt supported Israel in its war against the Palestinians. The Palestinians lost thousands of men, women, and children. Oh, it's because of Hamas. Hamas is a terrible terrorist organization. I mean, Hamas has how many tanks? Oh, uh, none. Hamas has how many aircraft? Uh, none. Hamas has how many helicopter gunships? Well, uh, none. Hamas has how many howitzers? Uh, none. They have how many 500-pound bombs? None. How many 1,000-pound bombs? None. How many nuclear weapons? None. Okay, they have some bottle rockets. Give me 100 bucks and I'll make 10 bottle rockets for you tomorrow for you to go out and experiment and play out in the fields. Bottle rockets without guidance systems. But Ted Cruz says, they're dangerous. They're horrible terrorists. Folks, Hamas is the government. They run the government of Gaza. It's like the garbage people. It's like the bureaucrats, the people that clean the streets. And yes, they have some policemen. They try to have law and order. And they have bottle rockets. <sighs> Well, they have tunnels. It's dangerous, tunnels. You only have tunnels when you have to hide, my friends. And they've got to hide from all of the military armaments of the Israelis. The Israelis got their lawn chairs and couches out and put them on the top of the hills and got their liquor and everything and watched as their own military forces bludgeoned Gaza. That's incredible, isn't it? Never, never has... Tel Aviv had any of its banks attacked by the Arabs. Now, I want you to think about this. Seven million population, and all around them are Arabs, hundreds of millions of Arabs, 90 million Arabs in Egypt alone. There's 80 million Arabs north of Israel and Turkey. That's two countries. That's 160 million people, all Muslims. Why haven't they attacked Israel? Now, Rothschild has all of his banks that line the streets of Rothschild Boulevard. That's right, there is a Rothschild Boulevard in downtown Tel Aviv. It's the banking capital of Israel. All of these huge, but they even have a Bank of America branch. But on 9-11, it was the Americans that were attacked in the World Trade Center. It was not the Rothschild banks in Tel Aviv. Now, the Arabs, these terrorists, could have boarded airplanes in Cairo. And within about two minutes, they'd have been overhead in Tel Aviv. 
They could have hijacked those planes from Cairo. They could have gone to Beirut, Lebanon next door, just north, and hijacked airplanes there. And within five minutes, they'd have been over Israel. They could have gone to Ankara or Istanbul, Turkey, and hijacked air, air, aircraft there. And within 10 minutes, they'd be over Israel. They could have gone to Baghdad, Iraq, or Amman, Jordan, or Damascus in Syria, and loaded up on all the aircraft. I mean, Israel wouldn't stand a chance, would it? It would be in tatters from all of the terrorists. You say, well, they, they really control that. I mean, they, 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 they're watching. Oh, yeah, the, sure, they're watching. Folks, there has never been a jet aircraft, a passenger jet aircraft, shot down over Israel. And there will not be one. The Arabs don't attack Israel. Let me tell you why they don't attack Israel. It's not because the Israelis have nuclear weapons. It's because the Arabs are controlled by the Jews. The terrorists are actually paid for, funded, sponsored, trained by the U.S. CIA and the Israeli Mossad. This is the first time this has ever been told to you on the radio, isn't it? It's incredible, folks. Why 9-11? Why do they have to come all the way to the United States to attack us? Why didn't they attack? If their enemy is Israel, why don't they attack Israel? If their enemy is the Jews, this little bitty bastion, this little bitty oasis, this little bitty country, this little sliver of land buried deep in the midst of the, the Muslims, why haven't the Muslims seen fit to attack it? Why is ISIS today attacking Syria? Why is ISIS today attacking Iraq? Why is ISIS made up of Muslims who are killing mostly Muslims? Why aren't the Muslims getting together and going and killing the Jews? Because those Muslims are controlled, funded, sponsored, trained, by the Jews. When Tel Aviv is destroyed, when every bank there is bombed to the ground, when all of the aircraft from all of those nations are hijacked and brought into Israel, when Tel Aviv, its financial capital is destroyed, then I'll say, I believe there's really a terrorist threat. There is a jihad against the Muslims by the Muslims. Now, the United States goes in, and we send all our troops in and so forth, and we kill the Muslims too. We kill the Muslims in Iraq. We kill the Muslims in Afghanistan. We kill the Muslims in Libya. We kill the Muslims in Yemen. We kill the Muslims in Somalia. We kill, kill, kill Muslims. And then our president has the, the gall to stand up and said. This is not a war against the Muslims. Of course it's a war. The Muslims know they're the ones being murdered. How dare you say we're not being murdered, say the Muslims. Ted Cruz says this is a war against the Muslims. He says it. Rand Paul says it's the Muslims we're fighting. They say it. Vote for them for president and they'll give you another war, a greater war. They'll give you a bigger war than, than, than Obama has. They are puppets. They are, they're led by the marionettes. Folks, I'm telling you, Ted Cruz will bring us into a war. Vote for him for president. Vote for Rand Paul for president. They're telling you right now they're Israel first. That's what Ted Cruz went to that Christian meeting, that conference, and the first thing out of his mouth was, Israel is our greatest ally. They wanted to know why Israel was murdering Christians in the Middle East. Why is Israel murdering Christians and Palestinians? But Ted Cruz says they're our greatest ally. They're not an ally at all. They helped to kill John F. Kennedy. Read my book, Conspiracy of the Six-Pointed Star. They stole the plans for the, the, the nuclear bomb. The Jews stole the plans. Read my book, Conspiracy of the Six Pointed Star. They paid a bribe to President Harry Truman so that he would recognize their nation of Israel. Read my book. It's in my book. I prove it in Conspiracy of the Six Pointed Star. 
Ted Cruz's wife, I want to repeat it again, works for Goldman Sachs Bank. She's an executive there. And he's a favored child of the Jews. They put him through Harvard. They made him a senator. They sent Sarah Palin, who in her office as governor of Alaska, had a flag in her office, a six-pointed star. That's Sarah Palin's theme flag. She didn't have an American flag in her office. She had the six-pointed star of the Jews, Sarah Palin. I'm telling you, Sarah Palin, John, she was a big supporter of John McCain. What does John McCain want us to do? Go in and kill more Arabs. Go in and kill more Muslims. Go in on the internet and look for John McCain with all the pictures. He went over to Syria and had pictures made with a Syrian terrorist, with ISIS. Folks, listen to me. Our plan is to bring destabilization, chaos, and death to the Middle East, and we're doing it. We've brought death to the Middle East, and the the, the Muslims have fought themselves there for hundreds of thousands, for excuse me, hundreds of years. Ever since Muhammad fought the, the his fellow Muslims and everyone in the Middle East through jihad, the Muslims have been killing each other. Let them kill each other. Let us return to the United States. Tell Ted Cruz, shut up about Israel. Tell Rand Paul, shut up about Israel. We're America first. We're going to bring our troops home. Let the Muslims kill the Muslims. Let me tell you what's going to happen, folks. If we don't give the Jews money, if we don't pay for ISIS, then the Jews will be stuck with paying for ISIS. We need to take our money home from Israel. We need to take our military home from the Middle East. We need to take care of America. We need to watch out for this country. We need to take care of our economy. We need to put America first. We need to cut off the Ebola virus by stopping all these Africans from coming to America and bringing up Ebola with them. And tell Ted Cruz, not a dollar more for Israel, not a dollar more for ISIS. And tell Rand Paul, if you say one more time, that Israel is an ally of the United States, you'll never get a vote from me. By the way, the Democrats are going to be just like them. Not a dime's worth of difference. It doesn't matter whether you vote Republican or Democrat in the next election. They're going to give you Israel first. Seymour Hersh said so. He said our democracy is gone. It's amazing. The neocons... The Jews of the, called neocons have taken over America. And democracy went so quickly. It just, whoosh, it's gone. Am I out of time, Sandra? Yes. Okay, Sandra's over at our machine. I'm out of time. It's been great being with you today. We're the greatest oil power on earth. We're the wealthiest nation in the world. We don't need Middle East oil. We don't need the Jews. They're people who hate Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Muslims, they don't respect our Lord. They don't believe that he died on the cross for their sins. We need to preach the truth to them. The only thing we need to do is preach the truth to them. We don't need to kill them. Leave them alone. Except tell them the truth. I'm Tex Mars. You've been listening to Power of Prophecy. Tune in each time during this same time period on shortwave radio, on the internet, and discover the power of prophecy.